Disconnected is a dramatic series about how people from around the world are facing the challenges of a global crisis. It is being shot entirely during the COVID-19 pandemic, following all social distancing guidelines in four countries and six time zones, with a cast and crew of over 50 people from around the world. a week from Monday. We have to have it edited by really Wednesday and then score it Thursday, upload it Friday. No problem, right? Every week. Every week for eight weeks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's unique about this project? Everything. Uh, uh, everything is unique about it. It's never been done before. I mean, a project like this is every actor's dream. What are you thinking? It's going to take two hours to shoot this? I think an hour. What we'll probably do, Eric, is we'll the probably scene. get on with the UK and then Kigali, just so that we can FaceTime with them while they're doing their performance. And then we can be done with them. And then we'll come back to you guys, and then we can work your performance individually on these Zoom calls. Do you want him just to clean it up and send it to you? Because obviously you can't, you, you know, you, I mean, who knows what you're going to do in the edit. I would love for him to, at the very least, string it out if he can. Right, so it'll just be Matt and I talking to you right into the screen. You'll be talking to us. Are we going to have a playback going or no? no? Yeah, you can have playback. Scene 16 through 29, take four, Mark. Scene 16 through 29, take four. Yeah. Scene 16 to 29, take four. both in lockdown and discussing how this idea of everyone being so isolated was disconnecting everybody and what that was going to do in the long term. We both believe that human beings just aren't built to be this, as the title says, disconnected from each other, right? That not having human contact with each other is overall a detrimental thing. It kind of reminds me of theater, because I feel like uh, right before an opening of a show, you're kind of like, how is this all going to come together? When we first started kind of really thinking, could we do a show like this? Uh, obviously, the first thing that comes to mind when you start throwing out, oh, we want to shoot it, and how about this group in Africa, and this group in India, and this group in New York, and this group in the UK? How are you going to pull that off? What technology are you going to need to pull this off? We wanted to do something much more complex, and I don't mean just technically complex. That's fun to kind of find your way through that stuff. But uh, a much more textured story. And it's very difficult to do that under the confines of a Zoom call and actually shoot proper scripted scenes. And now he's stealing my net. Your internet? No, my pool net. Why, well, why would he be I think I'm gonna call the police. What's going on there? Anton, you know, he'd be on the phone shooting with us, directing something with us on a Zoom call, and then at the same time texting with Matt or on the phone with somebody else, you know, doing like three or four different things while we're shooting. 
Two sets running in two different cities remotely, all shot by the actors themselves. All right, anything we didn't get, we'll just get, uh, I guess, tomorrow. There's a lot that I need to learn to be able to pull this off, like uh, DPing, sound, holding a camera, setting up shots, lighting, all that stuff. That might be a little yeah, it might be a little too camera. lightweight, yeah. I think what's interesting about this project is there's a lot of us who are, who are out of our comfort zone on it, me being one of them. I'm not a camera op, I'm not a DP, I'm not sound, I'm not art department. All I'm trying to do is just get it in focus. That's my goal, get it in focus. Can we hear it? Okay, great, that's a good starting point. Our industry as a whole right now is very much out of its comfort zone and we're still figuring out ways to do something. The green screen looks pretty flat lit. I mean, it looks good from a, from a lighting perspective. I just wonder about the quality of the, if it's 1080 versus 4K. That's Which I know nothing about. It's six by six. And I can even probably get a bigger green screen if you have the ability to hang it. We have the ability yeah. to hang it. Okay, so you have a space that's big enough. It's got some furniture and stuff in it's, it, but it's, I can... It's the garage. Yes, I'm in a garage. Okay, cool. These are fake. I'll, uh, I'll give you the whole truck's worth for, for three bucks a pop. How about that? Yeah, and you can get them for like 50 cents on Amazon. Fuck this Can guy. you... What? No, you don't... Oh, fuck! 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 Practice appropriate social distancing, pal. We'll do one more. Tara, this will be take two of the same thing. The little things are the challenge. All the camera rental houses are closed. Anything beyond a 10 minute drive, you cannot do. Show it the other day. He traveled 17 kilometers in lockdown. I don't know how he managed that. Just to get to where we had arranged the camera in Noida. For the 17 kilometer duration, I got around uh, lifts of five to six kilometers and I walk uh, around 10 to 12 kilometers. So to reach the camera. Like next day, when I woke up, my legs are like shivering. So you guys decided to go from the iPhone 6 to the <laughs> highest resolution times 10 of anybody else on the show. Okay. I get it. You want to catch up. You're playing catch up. <laughs> yeah, I guess. It's amazing. They're killing it in India. They've got new camera. They've got more actors. They've got amazing angles. And they're doing a really good job. It's, it's great to see. That was the expectation from a lot of the cast. We were just gonna do what everyone else did, right? We were just gonna shoot on your iPhone, you know, we're gonna just do a little blog, it was gonna be really simple. And then all of a sudden cameras started arriving at their doorstep and we started going on these, you know, pre-pro calls as if we were going into a production and they started going, whoa, well, this is this is kind of a lot. Matt had a very original idea and foresight to jump in as quickly as he did to create this project before anybody else has. I haven't seen anything that's involving storylines and characters episodically like this at all. I think we're way ahead of the curve. Matt came to us, we've known Matt for a while, and he, so he sends me a Facebook message and say, hey, I've got this crazy idea. And he pitches this ridiculous idea that we're gonna shoot a TV show whilst in lockdown. I've been working with Matt, and so he told me this project, and he was like, you're gonna become an actress. I'm like, no, 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 no. I don't think I can, be, I can act. I didn't want to be discouraging, but I thought it was just a train wreck. Not that it was not a good idea, it was an incredible idea, but what they would have to overcome to actually pull it off just felt insurmountable. Immediately, I was intrigued and interested, you know, Hollywood's shut down. I trusted Matt creatively, but definitely also trusted Matt's approach to how we were going to shoot this and it was going to be something that, you know, was going to be safe and also creatively relevant. I thought it was amazing. All these young creative people, you know, sheltered in place and just like going, okay, and that the fact that they go, let's do something. I like the idea that it wasn't just an L.A. story about the coronavirus, that it was, you know, international. Honestly, it came as a huge, huge blessing. Uh, I think I was getting a little cabin fever because of the lockdown. Don't start it again. Will you just let me take a <laughs> Good evening to you too, Jeremy. I'm Eric Palladino, and I just got all the equipment to make this uh, show disconnected. I don't know how this is gonna go. I don't know what that is. That looks like some sort of flash. Oh, that's chargers. Batteries, adapter, all right. Monitor, um, I don't even know what that is. So I'm making a TV show here. 
I just got all the equipment to make this show at home. I am not a technologically savvy person, and my wife and I are going to have to shoot this together. My wife, who's never acted before, we are going to use all this equipment. Actually, that's why I'm calling Andre. They've grounded all non-essential flights. What does that mean? It just means that you can't come and stay with us yet. Tima! Okay, off. Bye-bye, you can't be in this interview. Bubs, I'm sorry. You're being very cranky. Bye-bye. Here comes the sun. Uh, you gotta reset. The hardest thing so far has been... <laughs> Mo has been trying to upload the footage. It has been terrible because the internet is so slow. It takes us three days to upload the footage. Yeah. The internet connection is so, so bad. I think it's still uploading somewhere. It's still uploading. It's still 19 upload. hours to go. <laughs> 19 hours to go. Rolling picture and sound and making sure your exposure is set right. When you also have a 20 month old who is wearing just a diaper and has put a mixing bowl on her head running through the room. That would never be a part of any production. And the fact that we are wearing all of the hats in the production, it just makes it that much more crazy. I remember when we did the first episode, I was like, ooh, because I thought it's going to be easier. And the scene is going to take more than like, maybe 20 minutes. But it took hours. I was like, oh, oh. The weather has been insane. When I did a post where I was like, yeah, we've been sweating off our mics. We did a bunch of takes the other day. Brandon was playing guitar and his lab was like sweat off his chest. Remember we shoot in the restaurant and sometimes mostly in the kitchen. There's a note that coming in, they have to cook. Episode three, we were shooting in the kitchen and our waiter came to me and said, hey, like, we got a customer here and you got to make a cocktail because we don't have a bartender. So I had to go and make a cocktail for this, <laughs> this customer. You got to do what you got to do. Please don't jump on this. Bro. Let's try one more. I did you jump. did, honey, and it's okay that you did, but we don't want to do it again. Ready, Roland? Yep, yeah, you go. Actors are shooting in their own homes, and many of them have to deal with their own family dynamics. Our older one, who's seven, that's totally fine. He's self-sufficient in a lot of ways and can busy himself. I said in a lot of ways. I didn't say he was completely self-sufficient. The 20-month-old, if we were to incorporate her in the shoot, there would be no continuity. If you're the Paladinos and you have three kids under nine, it's not so easy to shoot your scenes. Let's just say I didn't communicate it he probably communicate as well it. as I should have. I was like, yeah, Matt's got this thing and we just do it. You'll be yeah. in some scenes, you know, like. He came to me and he said, so we're gonna, we're gonna like shoot a show. I was like, uh, oh, okay, you know, and he's like, you know, you might be in it. Maybe the kids will be in it a little bit. And then cut to like, I'm having to sort of memorize dialogue and we're doing different picture setups. Next thing you know, she's an actress. <laughs> <laughs> Boom, she's an actress. But then they started seeing the results. And I think that all of the team started realizing that this stuff looks great. This story is being told in, in a way that I never thought it was going to be possible. Donc je peux avoir des pommes de terre quand je veux. And if there aren't any here, je peux venir ici. I think a lot of what we've seen from episode one to episode four is the team's buying in more because I think they're being empowered by this type of filmmaking. Of course, of course, of course. Hi, hi. The first shot of our storyline is us cheering at 7 p.m. out of the back door to our backyard, and we do that every single day. Thanks, Mama. And I remember telling Matt, like, here's something that we actually do every day. This is something that New Yorkers are doing, and we'll just film that, and if you like it, you like it, and if not, and they said, yeah, that's a great idea, we'll, we'll include that. They're very open to us with all of our ideas. The collaboration on that front has been really nice. Sorry, I'm late. I had to put Ruby down. Oh, no, don't worry. It's just so good to see you all. We're very interested in global experiences, as well as how different societies take on or respond to 
similar issues. Working on Disconnected so far has been completely life-changing on many, many levels. For any actor to be part of something like this, especially during the lockdown. We're shooting in these different countries, but we want to shoot natively in those countries in the sense that culturally we are following storylines that make sense, but we also need to now what? Shoot in their language. That's another hurdle for us in this process of directing people in different languages. Speaking Swahili, we are Rwandese, it's not our first language. It was a bit challenging. You have to bring out all the emotions while thinking about the language. I thought uh, this show is gonna be difficult for me as it's my first project as to be acting. But uh, it became more challenging and uh, more interesting. I loved it. One, two, three, action. My first scene. As I was acting as an innocent wife, we were supposed to get a divorce before this lockdown. And then as this lockdown happened, it made us have to stay under the same roof. Well, from what I understand, I'm like a female Dr. Fauci. Well, I must say it was, it was kind of funny when I found out that they were going to make my character stand in between like <laughs> Trump and Pence. So your character is going to be composited in with him. Trump will be talking about whatever we find interesting from that week so that when we stream it next week, these shows feel like somebody who's watching will go, what the, f wait, what? what the <laughs> it feels like it's happening now. So your dialogue might change the night before you, you shoot it. If we stay the course, one million American citizens could be dead in the next eight weeks. So the president really had no choice. We may have outlined something for a character, and then we, we realized the day we're shooting, look what Trump just said today, or look what happened to the spike in this area, or oh, there's an interesting conspiracy theory going around the internet right now, and that would be better for this character to engage in that storyline. Things constantly are in flux, and they've even been in flux after we shot. If something happens in the news where there is a very interesting clip, then we're available so that we can say, okay, what, what do we have left to shoot? Where are we gonna put this? And then Matt knows he can shoot it to me for a quick dialogue pass, and I can just like throw in three lines or change the way it interacts with that video clip in a way that flows. You can plan broad strokes. You can't really plan the nuance. It makes this thing very fun. It's interesting and, you know, it pops and you gotta be on your toes for all the new developments. So in the middle of making this time capsule of the global response to the COVID-19 pandemic, George Floyd was killed by police in Minneapolis. It's a challenge like anything else, walking that fine line with just being true and realistic without seeming to be either exploitative or pandering. We gotta approach it honestly. It's not our job to unpack this issue, it's our job to unpack how this issue affects the people in the story because that's what makes it feel real. It was just so heartbreaking and so wrong and I don't know. We've got half of the season that deals just with the global pandemic. And now all of a sudden, I'm just scared to do anything. I feel frozen. There was a moment a couple of days ago where I just thought, well, we should just scrap this whole thing. And it was a cool art project for four episodes and be done with it. But we wanted to talk to everybody because everyone's got their own thoughts uh, and make sure people would be comfortable moving ahead and including these events in our very topical project that we're doing here. The only way change is going to occur is by shining light on these issues. What was awesome was hearing Roger talk about his experience being a part of LAPD and his whole experience as being a uh, police officer. I have fired cops, I have arrested cops. I am not blind to the problems of the system and how they have arisen. And for him to acknowledge that and just to be like, yep, spot on, that shit's happening. I was just like, wow. I don't want to be making entertainment right now. And the conversation about trying to do good, but then it turns out you're actually doing harm, but you don't know. That's such a present conversation right now. This is not the time for like 
popcorn. Let's pretend the world isn't burning around us. This is time for us to talk about serious issues, maybe through the guise of entertainment, but let's make some people think. We're all in this together, and I certainly feel very connected to all of you and what you're going through. We may be in a completely different country, but we are going through the same emotions as you. We've been very fortunate to have, you know, our producer, Ashley, on board because she can do the work of 20 people. What I had planned on was scripts being delivered on Mondays, and then on Tuesday we would do pre-pro calls, and then people could begin shooting on Wednesday. Everybody has to shoot all of their scenes by Sunday and have all the media uploaded by Sunday night. Post gets about four days from having the media to needing the final cut so that we can lock picture get it over to Kobe Brown for music. And then sometimes he has to do it simultaneously with our sound mix. The insanity of it all really hit me when we got the first episode. And you're seeing these people all over the world recording in different places. I've never been on a call with a director where he's like, you know what? That scene is empty, isn't it? Because we had to record this. He's like, it's no problem. I have to walk my dog. I'll, I'll do it within an hour. We had that recording. Like, that just doesn't happen. I'll probably end up with 10 dialogue tracks, 16 effects tracks, background tracks, and four to six music tracks. And then all of it goes to color. Concurrently, we will then go back into the writer's room so that we can come up with the scripts for the next episode. It's a crazy timeline. Yeah. And like when you say it, like when you say it out loud, it kind of sounds stupid. Like I like I sit there and I go like, this, like was that a was that a smart thing that when we were coming up with that timeline? I'm just continually impressed with the post work on this project. We have our editor Will. You know, I don't think he's slept in the last three weeks, and he is just really working hard. From the editing to the color, I mean, just to try and seamlessly pull these things together. Adrian, the colorist. That's a nightmare of a job because we're dealing with six different camera formats. Also, we're dealing with different talent levels in terms of shooting. So the lighting is different. And so when he gets those files, trying to make those match <laughs> and look cohesive is a Herculean task. I think this project, the real star of it is that post-production machine because not only is it being having to match a whole lot of different worlds, but it's having to do it so quickly. So we really have to make sure that whoever we bring on board is really at the top of their game. Kobe Brown, just the Amazing. composer, just knocked it out of the park. And every actor, you know, you want to have great music behind your work. If you have something coming up at the right time and supporting what you're doing, it can make you or break you. I just sort of wrote with an emotional tenor in mind more than specific scenes because picture is going to present a lot of ideas musically. The big thing we got to do with music is connect these stories. I feel like there's probably four pretty strong melodic ideas there that yeah. you could plug in as themes and I'm sort of working on cool textures now that could serve as transitional pieces. He is making me seem like a much better actor than I actually am. <laughs> Thanks, Kobe! As uh, Rwandan women, we all always have this fear about uh, not uh, understanding and figuring out uh, what you can accomplish, what you can do. I think that fear, we have to let it go and start discovering ourselves more and more and more. That's the most thing I discovered in this Disconnected. When you have a lot of support also, like I got a lot of messages saying, yeah, you are doing good, you know. It also pushes you to do greater than what you did before. This is an experiment. This was never meant to just, oh, we, hey, we're gonna go make money with this. It really wasn't about that. It was about all of these artists that we knew that we, some we worked with, some that we've always wanted to work with, and we know they're just sitting home. One of the things about being in lockdown is that you can kind of feel uncreative or that you can't be out, especially when you are in this kind of business. You wanna be out meeting new people, pitching ideas and doing something creative. And this allows us to do that whilst remaining at a socially acceptable distance. Matt's a guy of action, and when he comes up with a concept, he will do it. He's not going to be the guy who I think like a lot of people go like, oh, wouldn't it be great if, and then mm, let's think about it, mm, how will we get it? He kind of barrels forward, for better or for worse. In barreling forward, he really kind of captured a little bit of lightning in a bottle, so to speak. 
the proof of concept came in the pilot. And I think once that proof of concept was there, then he's able to kind of pull in a bunch of writers and pull in people and say, look, this is what we did pretty much by ourselves. We happen to have met these characters during a very, very strange time. But what's going to happen three, four seasons down the line? You know, this is just the introduction to them, but having to adapt to the new world, how things are going to be now, I think is really interesting. There's lots of stories left to be told. So hopefully we get the opportunity to do that. The easiest note you can give, like, you know, script is to like, raise the stakes. And what's so incredible about this piece is the stakes couldn't be higher and they're all sort of shared throughout the whole world at the same time. And I think sort of tying together a few little stories of different people that are connected kind of in a kind of a small way. I think it just might be the right story at the right time.